there's one thing I've learned in the narco world, it's that life is more complicated than you think. A pilot who smuggles guns for a drug cartel, or a godmother who has a penchant for bloodbaths, or a mob boss who came up with ingenious ways of escaping prison, or a gangster who smuggled heroin in coffins. These characters sound too dangerous to be true, and be warned, because they are all very real people who dominated the precarious world of drug trafficking in a violence saturated era thanks to their notorious deeds, that the lives of these drug lords and mafia queens have been adapted into shows and movies, which will indeed give you some goosebumps. In today's video, we will delve into some of these series and films which are inspired by actual events, and shed light on the underworld drug operations of the 70s and beyond. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you. Let's begin capability indefinitely without anybody noticing it. Narcos TV show. We have to, have to begin the list with Narcos, and there's no two ways about it. The Netflix original series centered on the real-life Colombian cocaine kingpin Pablo Escobar, with insights into how drug cartels minted money by navigating the dangerous world of narco-terrorism. The show also focused on two American DEA agents, Javier Pena and Steve Murphy who were sent to Colombia to stop Pablo Escobar's drug operations and capture him. Spanning across three seasons, the show kicked off by portraying Escobar's foray into the cocaine trade in Colombia in the 70s and his eventual rise as the leader of the Medellin cartel. Escobar's illegal distribution of the new drug in the U.S. generated a huge demand for the substance in the country and also gave rise to drug-related violence prompting the Drug Enforcement Administration to engage in a two-season-long battle with the drug lord. Holed up in a safe house, Escobar died following a gunfight between his cartel, the DEA, and the Colombian police. After his death, the show shifted focus to Escobar's rival gang, the Cali Cartel, led by Gilberto Rodriguez Orejuela. Real-life DEA agents were brought in for consultations on the show. An executive producer Eric Newman said in an interview that Narcos was 50-50 when it comes to fiction and nonfiction. Pablo was indeed referred to as the Robin Hood of Medellin for his generous donations to the low-income community, which contributed to building houses, schools, and playgrounds. And he indeed was a police officer before he switched careers to become a drug lord. However, Pablo's son, Sebastian Marroquin, who wrote a book about his father, pointed out several inaccuracies in Narcos including minute details such as which sports team Pablo supported, and major claims such as Pablo never attacked the family members of his rival gang, the Cali Cartel, a mix of fact and fiction. Narcos tops the list when it comes to drug lord show recommendations. <laughs> El Chapo TV Show This brings us to the show El Chapo, named after Mexican drug lord Joaquin Guzman's self-assigned moniker. Upon joining the drug trade, Guzman made himself known as El Chapo, which translates as Shorty, presumably because of his humble height. The audience lapped up Guzman's story in the same manner as Pablo Escobar's, owing to his notorious feats such as establishing marijuana cultivation at the age of 15, becoming the leader of the Sinaloa cartel, escaping prison in a laundry cart, getting recaptured, and eloping a high-security penitentiary again through secret tunnels, and riding bikes on rails. Three seasons of El Chapo, aired on Univision and subsequently released on Netflix, chronicled Guzman's early induction into a world of crime and drugs in the 70s, him becoming a member of the Guadalajara cartel, and then heading the Sinaloa cartel, which illegally transported heroin, cocaine, marijuana, worth billions of dollars across the Mexican border. El Chapo has a reputation for knowing the underground tunnels around Mexican borders, like the back of his hand. While starting out, he made an ambitious promise to Pablo Escobar about having drugs delivered within 48 hours at the cost of his life. However, the real-life Guzman wasn't too happy with his on-screen depiction and claimed that it significantly deviated from his actual life story. The makers of El Chapo had to film the show in Colombia as the power struggle over his drug cartel following his re-arrest made the situation in Mexico too volatile. If you are a sucker for narcotics drama and are looking for something Pablo Escobar-ish, El Chapo is your man, who has been named as one of the most influential personalities in the world, all thanks to his billion-dollar drug empire. American Gangster Movie 
Taking a break from shows, we bring you one of the greatest crime films of all time, Ridley Scott's American Gangster. The film was partially biographical of Frank Lucas, a Harlem mob boss who made millions of dollars by purchasing high-quality heroin from Thailand and smuggling them into the U.S. on service aircrafts returning from the Vietnam War. We did it all right. Who the hell is going to look in a dead soldier's coffin? Frank Lucas said in a New York Magazine feature, on which the film is based. Frank Lucas, brilliantly portrayed by Denzel Washington, popularized his brand of heroin as Blue Magic, whose demand rose to uncontrollable heights, owing to the purity of the product. Lucas, who was driven into a world of crime after a troubled childhood, and witnessing the death of his cousin, moved to New York in the 60s and was taken under the wing of Harlem gangster Ellsworth Bumpy Johnson. When Bumpy Johnson died, Lucas took charge of the operations and established himself as a ruthless mobster by delivering brutal fates to those who stood in his way, which was evident in the murder scene of Idris Elba's character Tango. Admitting to the actual murder, Lucas said in the New York Magazine interview, I shot him four times, right through here. Bam, 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 bam. Lucas was known for eliminating the middleman and purchasing heroin directly from the Golden Triangle in Southeast Asia. He subsequently became the target of an outcast Newark cop, Richie Roberts, aptly played by Russell Crowe. Interestingly, Roberts and Lucas developed an unlikely friendship, with the detective eventually becoming the godfather of Lucas's son. Roberts believed in second chances and offered an opportunity to Lucas to reveal the names of the corrupt NYPD officers who aided his drug trade. Following Lucas's confession, a surprising chunk of DEA and New York federal officers were arrested. American Gangster may have been at the epicenter of controversies over accuracy, but it remains a masterpiece of the crime genre. Mom, what are we doing here? Your father's laundering money for a Mexican drug cartel. Where's my five million? Ozark TV Show Back to TV shows. We have Netflix's Ozark which is a work of fiction, but its theme of money laundering is inspired by how real-life drug cartels keep the illegal cash flow going. At the center of Ozark is the Bird family, headed by Marty Bird, who seemingly works as a financial advisor, but smuggles millions of dollars, cash only, through his business, for a Mexican drug cartel. When Marty and the cartel discover that Marty's business partner has been siphoning money, the Bird family patriarch realizes that his life is at stake. To save himself and his family from a brutal fate, Marty promises to make up for the lost cash and go bigger on the money laundering scheme, thus uprooting his family from Chicago to the Lake of the Ozarks in Missouri. In his new location of operation, Marty clashes with the criminal families of the Snells and the Langmores and incurs the wrath of Kansas City Mafia. While the characters of Ozark are fictional, they are based on real-life people who pose as regular job holders but are actually involved in money laundering for drug lords, just like Marty. After moving to the Ozarks, Marty's first job was to move $500 million in cash, which seemed like an impossible feat, but Marty and his wife came up with ingenious ways to make that happen. Behind the scenes, the showrunners were actually guided by an FBI agent on how Marty should keep the money flowing to evade the authorities. In addition to that, Ozark incorporated several other details from true events, such as a corrupt pastor helping the Snells run their drug business, the disputed land that the Snells were after, which was eventually taken away by the government to build a dam, was inspired by the events of the Bagnell Dam construction in Missouri. Ozark goes over the top with its thrill and crime, and that's where the charm of this four-season show lies. Any last words, just in case? Don't miss. Snowball, TV show. Next up, we have the FX series Snowfall, which focuses on the rise of a budding drug lord named Franklin Saint in 1980s Los Angeles. While Franklin wasn't a real-life Pablo Escobar or El Chapo, the character was heavily inspired by creator John Singleton's school days when the crack epidemic was taking over the American market. Set in Los Angeles between the years 1983 and 1986, Snowfall chronicled the rising crime and violence not just in the African-American neighborhoods, but also in big cities like New York, Miami, and Los Angeles, as an after-effect of crack cocaine infiltrating the drug market. With the crack epidemic as the backdrop, Snowfall spun a thrilling world of crime involving Franklin Saint, crime family luchador Gustavo Zapata, Mexican mob boss's niece Lucia Villanueva, and CIA operative Teddy McDonald. The show is loved for its realistic depiction of how the lives of the protagonists were affected by the introduction of crack cocaine, which was developed to counter the falling rates of cocaine. While the show was a work of fiction, it was based on first-hand accounts of those who experienced the effects of the drug wars in the 80s and lived through that crime-saturated era. 
Some of these personal accounts further explored the CIA's illegal operations within the U.S. Snowfall is a gritty crime series about how the rise of drug cartels changed America forever. American Made Movie Next on our list is the 2017 movie American Made, which was headlined by Tom Cruise as the real-life pilot turned smuggler, Barry Seal. The notorious character began his smuggling spree by illegally bringing Cuban cigars into America while flying for the Transworld Airlines. Owing to his remarkable flying skills, which made him almost undetectable on air, Barry Seal was entrusted by the CIA for running their clandestine reconnaissance missions in Central America amidst the drug war, flying special aircrafts with advanced surveillance technology. Soon enough, Barry Seal caught the attention of the Medellin cartel, headed by Pablo Escobar and began operating as their drug trafficker, money launderer, and gun smuggler, eventually acquiring the title, the gringo who always delivers. When tasked with delivering cocaine, Barry began dumping the illegal cargo on the outskirts of Louisiana to evade airport security. He made so much money trafficking cocaine that he hid the cash in suitcases in his backyard. While the CIA paid no heed to his smuggling activities, Barry incurred the wrath of the DEA. Once the CIA abandoned SEAL, he was chased down by the FBI and struck a deal with the White House, leveraging his extensive knowledge of the country's overseas activities. After photos of Barry Seal were exposed as propaganda by the White House, he lived in constant fear of being murdered and was subsequently killed by assassins. American Maid doesn't claim to be an absolutely truthful representation of Barry Seal's life, but a thrilling adaptation with creative liberties. Director Doug Liman described the film as a fun lie based on a true story. Interestingly, being a qualified pilot, Tom Cruise did the flying scenes in the movie on his own. Where did you get this stuff? Columbia. I can't feel my face. Blow. Another biographical crime drama that's as thrilling as it is tragic is Blow, which documented the rise and fall of cocaine kingpin George Jung. Brilliantly portrayed by Johnny Depp, George Jung's foray into the drug business began when he moved to Los Angeles and made tons of money by peddling marijuana. In prison, he bonded with the drug lord Diego, who was actually the on-screen representation of real-life mob boss Carlos Leda Rivas. Following his release, George reconnected with Diego, aka Carlos, in Colombia and created a crime empire of his own while smuggling obscene amounts of cocaine for Pablo Escobar's Medellin cartel. George Jung became one of Escobar's top importers in the U.S., but was eventually betrayed by his business partner, which triggered the collapse of his empire. Following the birth of his daughter, George ditched the cartel and switched to civilian life, only to be arrested by the DEA and the FBI at his 38th birthday bash. Blow stands out for realistically portraying George's rise to fame in the cocaine business and the personal losses he suffered as a result of his drug empire. Towards the end of the movie, George is portrayed as a tragic character who did not get the chance to meet his dying father one last time and yearns to reconnect with his daughter, who has severed all ties with him. Ride, white line, highway, tell all Narcos, Mexico, TV show. Meanwhile, if you were wondering why the super popular Narcos didn't get a fourth season, that's because what was supposed to be the new season eventually got made into a companion series titled Narcos, Mexico. While the parent series focused on the drug smuggling in Colombia, this new show, also spanning three seasons, documented the early origins of the drug trade in Mexico and the Guadalajara cartel's rise to prominence in the budding cocaine empire of the 1980s. The show chronicled how it all began with the cropping up of more and more stray marijuana producers who were conglomerated to create the massive drug empire of Mexican kingpin Miguel Angel Felix Gallardo. Much like Escobar, Gallardo was initially a federal agent who was spotted and recruited by the Sinaloa drug lord, Pedro Aviles Perez. Upon his death, Gallardo took the reins of Pedro's cocaine empire. DEA agent Enrique Kiki Camarena moved to Mexico with his family to charter the dangerous world of the cocaine epidemic and kill Gallardo's operations, but was tortured and slaughtered by the infamous drug lord. Following his brutal fate, another DEA agent, Walt Breslin, created a covert team to hunt down and penalize Gallardo for his criminal activities. Narcos Mexico, a prequel to its parent show, depicts the power struggles within the Mexican drug cartels quite realistically and also explores Gallardo's ties to the Colombian drug lords, particularly to Pablo Escobar. If Narcos left you wanting more, Narcos Mexico promises to satiate the craving. Zelda TV show 
Next, we have the recently released Netflix miniseries, Griselda, which sheds light on the rise and fall of the titular character, Griselda Blanco, a real-life powerful mob boss who operated the cocaine business in Miami in the 70s and 80s. The character has been brilliantly brought alive on screen by Sofia Vergara, who also co-produced the show. With some former experience in drug trafficking and having reportedly made millions in New York, Griselda moved to Miami in the pursuit of wealth and power. Emerging from Pablo Escobar's Medellin, Griselda soon made her mark in the male-dominated drug business by creating a cocaine empire in Miami and implementing unwavering violence. Griselda apparently loved killings and butchered her second husband, among others who stood in her way and even orchestrated the murder of her third husband from jail. Griselda killing her drug trafficking partner German Panesso was a significant event in the Miami drug wars, as after Panesso's murder, her power was established and she came to be known as the godmother of Miami's underworld. Griselda's murderous spree resulted in the death of a two-year-old, who was accidentally killed during an attack meant for his drug lord father. Griselda was untouchable as her biggest weapon was her army, known as the Pistoleros, who protected her at any cost. However, Excessive drug abuse and paranoia marked the beginning of Griselda's downfall, who was eventually arrested by the DEA. While serving time, Griselda tragically lost most of her children to revengeful acts of murder. The Netflix show brilliantly portrays Griselda as the Black Widow, whose notable business acumen and ruthless nature gave rise to an empire of drugs and violence. But no one knows my story. Until now. Queen of the South TV show. Another crime show with a female protagonist running a drug trade is USA Network's Queen of the South, which aired for five seasons spanning 62 episodes. The show introduced us to Teresa Mendoza, an ambitious mafia queen who may not be a real-life personality, but a character that was inspired by several female drug lords. Two names that crop up in connection with Teresa Mendoza's character are Mar Lori Chacon and Sandra Avila Beltran. Marlori smuggled cocaine into the United States through her Mexican and Colombian drug cartel connections, eventually earning the title Queen of the South, while Sandra was a third-generation drug trafficker in her family and was known as the Queen of the Pacific. Queen of the South is a television adaptation of the novel of the same name, written by Arturo Perez Reverte, who came across several strong female characters during his career as a war correspondent. The show focuses on the life of the impoverished Teresa, who lives in Mexico's Sinaloa and gets romantically involved with a member of a drug cartel. Taking an interest in the drug business, she attempts to improve her poverty-stricken condition by extreme means and becomes the target of the cartel. Fleeing Mexico, she lands up in the U.S. and joins the drug business run by the wife of the mob boss who wants Teresa dead. With her business genius and charismatic approach, Teresa soon establishes a drug cartel of her own. The show begins on a shocking note with Teresa being shot dead in the initial scenes, and then takes the viewers into her past through a thrilling flashback. Make sure to give Queen of the South a try. Traffic Movie We have another movie recommendation for you. 2000's crime drama Traffic, which gives off major documentary vibes as handheld cameras followed the protagonist, with the film mostly being shot in natural light. Traffic comes with an ensemble cast comprising the likes of Benicio Del Toro, Catherine Zeta-Jones, and Michael Douglas, among others. Director Steven Soderbergh was inspired to make a film on drug violence, having encountered numerous people who fell prey to drug abuse. His idea was also to explore how new drugs, foreign to the United States, made it across the border from Mexico and flooded the streets of Ohio and California. Soderbergh's vision won the movie four Oscars, owing to its style of cinematography the complexity of its messages, and the brilliant performances. Traffic follows three separate yet interconnected storylines set in Mexico City, San Diego, and Ohio. In Mexico, police officers Javier Rodriguez and Manolo Sanchez attempt to thwart the operations of the drug cartels only to find the high-ranking officer they are working for. General Salazar was part of it all. In the Ohio storyline, a conservative judge is appointed to lead the Office of the National Drug Control Policy and to spearhead the war on drugs, but is forced to make a tough choice when his own daughter turns out to be an addict. In San Diego, two undercover DEA agents arrest Carl Ayala, one of the biggest distributors of cocaine in the U.S., following which her pregnant wife, played by Zeta Jones, takes it upon herself to free her husband, orchestrate several murders, and engage in dicey deals in the process. With a boat stacked up, pull up to a dock and unloaded, nobody said a thing. There was no defense of the border to speak of. Cocaine Cowboys Documentary To round up our list, we have the sensational 
2006 documentary, Cocaine Cowboys, which chronicled the rise of drug kingpin John Roberts and Miami's transformation as the cocaine capital of the United States in the 70s and 80s. John Roberts, a close associate of Pablo Escobar, was referred to as the Medellin Cartel's American representative, who became a federal informant after his arrest. The documentary incorporates real-life accounts of law enforcement officers and former drug traffickers, along with news clippings from the era. Cocaine Cowboys began with Miami being a hub for marijuana import in the early 60s, which was soon replaced by the new drug, cocaine, whose affordability made it accessible to a bigger market. The documentary revealed the drug trade routes that led to Miami and how the mafia bosses struggled to conceal hideous amounts of cash. Cocaine Cowboys also explored the armed conflicts between the drug gangs in Miami, known as the Miami Drug Wars. It is shown that crime family matriarch Griselda, known for her bloodthirsty nature, was at the center of the violence involving drug cartels in Miami. It was this atmosphere of crime, specifically from Griselda's rambunctious drug trafficking, which earned the mobsters the moniker of the Cocaine Cowboys. Director Billy Corbin's documentary became a cult classic and paved the way for all the drug-related content that followed in the years after. Well, that's for the damage. And uh, here's a little something extra for your sister. Hey, little darling, and your bike. Marvelous her. So, folks, that was our list of crime shows and movies in which drug wars, criminal kingpins, and mafia queens take the center stage. The gripping storylines around the precarious operations of the drug cartels, chronicled in these series and films, are sure to keep you hooked to your screen all day. So, which ones have made it to your list of weekend binging? Please tell us in the comments below. If you like this video, please give us a shout out and watch this space for more marvelous content. And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one and be safe. Thanks everyone. Jimmy!